Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today, we're making blue gouda. Now, I don't know if this is a thing or not, but uh, I've come up with an idea that uh, gouda, even though it tastes fantastic by itself, needed a little bit of an improvement. So what I've done is, during the process of making the gouda, I've added some uh, Penicillium Rogue 40. And what I haven't done is I haven't pierced any holes in it and I've just waxed it. So to see how this interesting cheese is made, just have a look at the video. For today's blue cheese, I'm using Inglenook Dairy's unhomogenized milk. Now, the ingredients for this recipe are 10 litres or 10 quarts of whole cow's milk, a quarter of a teaspoon of mesophilic starter culture, one eighth of a teaspoon of Penicillium Roque 40 mould, 2.5 millilitres or half a teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in 60 millilitres of non-chlorinated water, 2.5 millilitres or half a teaspoon of liquid rennet, I'm using single strength, which is about IMCU 200, diluted in 60 millilitres of cool non-chlorinated water. And I'm also going to be using a saturated brine solution, about 18%. So we're going to heat up our milk now to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's reached that temperature, you can safely turn off the heat. Now we're going to be adding our mesophilic starter culture and our blue mould powder, which is Penicillium Roque 40. Now I'm just using two sachets of the Mad Millie uh, mesophilic starter culture. And there just happened to be something there on top, we got rid of that. And I'm using an eighth of a teaspoon there of the Penicillium Roque 40. I uh, have two versions in my shop. I have a mild and a strong. This is the strong version. So removing the spoon gently. I'm trying to anyway, without having any culture on it. We're going to allow these cultures and moulds to rehydrate now for five minutes. Okay, slightly less blurry picture. We're going to stir the milk now thoroughly to mix in the cultures and moulds. So stir for about a minute. So just a quick check of the temperature. Now I've just noticed that's starting to rise a little bit too much for my liking. So I'm going to put the lid on now. And I'm going to move it off the heat. I just use a simple double boiler method there. That little pot there contains some water and it heats up the top big pot. Now we're going to allow the milk to ripen now for 45 minutes. So once some of the lactose has been eaten by the lactic bacteria, uh, we're now going to add the other ingredients after we give it a quick stir to mix the cream back in again. Now we're going to add the calcium chloride solution now. Pop that in, give that another quick stir. About a minute I stir for here. And now we're going to add the rennet to the milk. Now when you, after you add the rennet, don't stir for any more than one minute. Just a final check of the temperature, make sure it's not rising too high above that 30 degrees Celsius. Here we go. So we're going to cover that and allow the milk to set for 45 minutes at 30 Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. Now 
now 45 minutes later we're going, to, we're going to check for a clean break now. Now that was a little bit too sloppy for me. I'll just check it with a knife just to see what it looks like. It's not as clean as I'd like it. It's a little bit too runny there. So if this happens to you, no problems at all. Just uh, pop the lid back on and wait for another 10 to 15 minutes and then check it again. Now you may have to do multiple instances of this if there's something not quite right with your rennet. Okay, so for me it was 15 minutes I had to wait. So I'm checking it again with the knife. And we've got a much better clean break there. It's not sloppy and certainly feels dense to the touch. Just one more quick check. Yep, good. So we're going to cut the curds now into 1.25 centimeter or half inch cubes. So just a quick whiz around with the curd harp there to do the horizontal cuts. And then we're going to use the curd knife to do the vertical cuts. Now you don't always get them even, so just try your best and uh, get the, the size as, as even as you possibly can. Now the, curds does, the curds do like to um, move around a little bit when we do this. So it's pretty hard to get it accurate. I went over some larger pieces again. Okay, now that's done, we're just going to cover that. And we're going to allow the curds to heal for five minutes. Okay, once the curds have healed, this prevents uh, shattering of the curds as we start stirring. It's the reason we wait that five minutes. Now if you see any large cubes pop up, then simply cut them with the edge of your knife. A knife, that's not a knife, that's a spoon. <laughs> cut them with the edge of your spoon. Um, yeah, and uh, make sure you've got some consistent sizes there. You don't want them differing too much from the uh, original size of 1.25 centimeters or half an inch. Okay, so gently stir that at the uh, start of the stirring process. Just checking the temperature again, that's good. Now we're going to gently stir the curds for five minutes. So five minutes later, the curds have shrunk a little. And we're going to allow them to settle, I believe, if memory uh, serves me right. Here we go. So we're allowing them to settle for five minutes. Now in the meantime, grab yourself a three litres of water and we'll heat that to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit or just above. Then we're going to do some washing of the curds. So we've got three pots set up there, one empty one one with water and one with the cheese. So just remove two cups of whey. And then we're going to add in uh, enough hot water from that other pot so that the temperature goes up to 33 degrees Celsius or 92 Fahrenheit. Now you may have to put a few cups in, so that's four so far. And we're not quite there. So two more. Just check again. Close enough. Now I know that the pot's going to get a little bit warmer as I continue to stir. Because it's been sitting on the steam again. So just make sure that water's all mixed through. So what we're basically doing now is lowering the acidity of the curds. So we're going to stir the curds for 10 more minutes to help them shrink a little bit and to wash them. So 10 minutes later. You can see they've shrunk quite a bit, which is um, perfect for this 
cheese. Now we're going to pop the lid back on and we're going to allow the curds to settle again for five minutes this time. So five minutes later, just removing the lid of the water again. And we're going to remove the whey down to the level of the curds until you can just see the curds. So this is the second washing of the curds. Now you can use this cup method I'm using here, or you can get a sieve and uh, dip off the whey using your cup in the sieve. You may have seen that in some of the other videos that I've produced using uh, washed curd recipes. Now you can just see the curds there. I don't want to go down too far into the curds. That's about it, without disturbing the layer of curds. So now I'm going to add in uh, enough of the 6 degrees Celsius water to bring the curds up to 36 degrees Celsius or 98 Fahrenheit. Now you will find that when you do add in some of the water they may mat together again, the curds that is. So give them a good stir so it breaks them up. So just going to check the temperature. And as if by magic, I've uh, magicked the uh, 36 degrees that I was aiming for. A little bit over, that's okay. Now gently stir for 20 more minutes. And you'll see that the curd size is quite small now. And that's what we're aiming for. So we're going to pop the lid back onto the pot. We're going to allow them to settle for 10 minutes. This just assists with uh, draining the curds in a minute. So over to the sink area, we're going to drain the curds through a colander. Now they are very tight knit. You can see how the curds have all matted together there. So I, I opted not to use a cheesecloth because the curds, I knew the curds weren't going to go through the holes in the colander basically. So we're going to now allow them to drain for five minutes so as much of that whey can uh, get released. So now we're just going to break off um, thumbnail size pieces and fill the mould with curds. The reason I did this was because lately when I've just been taking the curd mass and putting it into the, uh, into the basket there, I've been getting lopsided pressings of my cheese so they don't look level the top and the bottom so I thought I'll break up the curd similar to what I used to do a long time ago into thumbnail size pieces and we'll see what happens so there's the last of it in the basket just pulling down the cheesecloth so we don't get any marks in the side of the cheese during the first pressing, pop the follower on top and then we're going to take it over to the press area. Now we're going to press the cheese at about 2.5 kilograms or 5 pounds of pressure for 30 minutes. So it's a fairly light pressing. I haven't uh, screwed the spring down very much at all there. You can see a little bit of cloudy way coming out there. I really didn't want to press my luck because that cloudy way means that fat's coming out of the cheese. And that's what we don't want to happen. Now we're going to remove the cheese from the press and take it out of the mould. And we're going to flip it over. Now be careful after this first pressing. It might not have formed properly, but in my case it did, so that was okay. Now we're going to increase the pressure to 5 kilograms or 11 pounds for 3 hours. Okay, 
three hours later. We're going to remove the cheese from the press again and take it out of the mould. And that's formed up fairly well. We've got some uh, cheesecloth markings on the side. Now for this third pressing, same pressure, 5 kilograms, 11 pounds for another three hours. Okay, once the pressings are all complete, we grab our uh, saturated brine solution that I've got there in my little red brine bucket. Now you don't have to use a brine bucket like that. Any plastic container that is deep enough will work. Um, I've just got that there. I've seen to found it around the house and it works fine. So place it into a 18% saturated brine solution for 10 hours and turn it over or flip over the cheese at the five hour mark so it's evenly salted. So after the 10 hours has occurred, we're gonna place it on a mat to assist with air drying. Just got a simple bamboo mat there with a chopping board and just place it on there. So we're gonna air dry the cheese for two days or until touch dry and we're gonna turn it every six hours to assist with the drying. So it feels touch dry to me. So we're gonna get rid of that little board and we're gonna put it into a ripening box or maturation box whatever you want to call it then we're going to ripen that at 10 degrees to 10 to 13 celsius 50 to 55 fahrenheit at 85 percent relative humidity for one week i'm going to turn it every day so by turning daily this helps any mold and uh, not mold any uh, moisture to release from the cheese now if the mold does build up we can make a simple brine solution like this one. Just one cup of cool water and one teaspoon of salt, which I'm just stirring there in that little jug. And I'm gonna wash the cheese down. Now, if you do see that the mold keeps coming back, then we have added mold into the uh, cheese, so it's gonna come back. Um, so just uh, wash it with the solution. Now, I only washed it once during the whole week, but I did turn it every single day. I just wanted to see the mold build up on it. So this is after a week of development and you can see it's fairly mouldy but the cheese is still very firm to touch. So just using my brine solution, don't breathe in those spores that are coming off it of course. all those um, penicillium rope 40 spores through the air. Anyway, it's cleaning up very simply, uh, very easy to do, as you can see there. Now that was only on the surface, it hadn't penetrated into the cheese itself, even though the mold growth was probably going from the outside in, uh, sorry, inside out anyway, because I had added penicillium rope 40 to the cheese, as we saw at the start of the cheese. So just making sure that there's no surface mould on it before we proceed to the next step. Now I did mention at the start of the video that I was not going to pierce this video. video to pierce the video. Pierce the cheese. So we're not piercing the cheese as we would with normal blue cheese. I just want it to have a slight blue flavour. I want that gouda flavour to remain um, so I'm, to prevent any extra build-up of mould, I sprayed it with some white vinegar there. And just gave it a good rub over with the same cloth I was using before. So I'm patting it dry now. Before we move on to waxing. Making sure it's back to its touch dryness, if that's such a word. Just using a little bit of paper towel there to sit it on before I proceed over to the waxing area. So in the meantime, I've heated up my wax in my wax bowl up to 75 degrees Celsius or 167 Fahrenheit. I think that was one of my taste testers that walked past in. Oh, there he is. Anyway, that temperature will kill off any molds on contact. So we're gonna coat the cheese with 
two to three layers of cheese wax. And you can see a fairly simple method I use there is just dunk it in to as deep as I can in the bowl. It's a fairly shallow bowl. And you can see I get about a quarter of the cheese and I just rotate it uh, 90 degrees every time I dunk it in. To do those holes, you can see I've just got a little spoon there, put a bit of wax on and uh, run it over the top. Now I'm using uh, grease proof paper there and that prevents the wax from sticking to any surface, which is quite a bonus. So I'm putting on the second coat now, as you can see. Just simply dunking it in over the first coat. And I've still got a big gap there, so let's uh, fix that up, Gav. There we go. Spoon a bit of wax on and just uh, smooth it with the back of the spoon. That seals up any um, air gaps. Now, I inspected it again and I saw a little bit of a gap there, so just popped a little bit more wax on top. There we go. Got a little card to say what it is and when it's mature. Just one last inspection to make sure there are no holes in the wax. A little bit of wax on top and pop my card on top. So we're going to mature it at uh, 10 to 13 Celsius or 50 to 55 Fahrenheit at 75% relative humidity for at least six weeks and turn your cheese weekly. So fairly nice and simple cheese besides the washing part. Maybe I should reframe it. It was a little bit complex <laughs> when I come to think of it. Don't forget during that first week uh, after you've uh, air dried it that you need to turn it every day and if you see any signs of mold growing on it, like you did in this one, then make sure you wash it off with a brine solution. And to keep the, uh, the blue mold at bay, then don't forget to spray it with a little bit of vinegar as well. Now you saw I did all of that. I let it air dry again, and then I waxed the cheese. So what we're going to do is we're going to age this cheese for two months. You can age it for up to four months for a stronger flavour. However, because it doesn't have any holes pierced in it, the blue, uh, it won't have any veining. But it, the flavour, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, will be there. So we'll have a gouda with a nice blue flavour. Anyway, if you enjoyed this cheese, check out another video over here. Don't forget we have kits so you can make this with. You can use the blue cheese making kit. Um, over at our site littlegreenworkshops.com.au If you haven't already subscribed, please do and give the video a thumbs up. Well, thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.